Have you ever decided to do something really big? Like learn how to play guitar or uh, oh, make friends with the new kid down the street. Maybe you even want to bake a master chef worthy cake for your mom's birthday. You're super excited to get started, but then you sit down with the guitar and or you spend all morning working up the nerve to go knock on the new kid's door, and it turns out he's gone for a week of summer camp. Then you find the recipe for that amazing cake, and it's crazy. Doing big things takes work. It takes making a plan and then sticking with it. There are calluses along the way, patience and courage in building a friendship, and definitely some mess. But when you follow through, you find the music, you grow a friendship, you create amazing edible art. And through it all, others can see how God has given you the strength to stick with it. That's why commitment is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. For me, you good. You hold my future. You're working all the time. You're the mountain mover. From sunrise to sunset, till the sun comes back up again. You're by my side. You started a good work in me. I know that you will complete it. You will see. Also working on my strength and 
<laughs> Running takes a lot out of you. <sighs> I just can't take a second. Woo! <sighs> I'm so tired. Your body's gonna wanna give up. Ow. But I'm going to train my brain to keep running the race no matter what. Like right now, my body is telling me not to eat this kale because it looks gross. But my brain tells me that kale is good for giving my body energy. So here goes. Come on, brain. E I can't do it. I can't do it. Maybe I can find some easier ways to train my brain. In today's story, the Apostle Paul wrote about training for a different kind of race. No kale involved. <laughs> what? No, 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 no! The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 24 through 25. Did you know that some writers of the Bible talk sports? Well, not every sport, but at least one that you are familiar with. Yep, running. Running has been around ever since, well, since God created people. In fact, the Apostle Paul uses running as an example in one of his letters to the church in Corinth. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Now, Paul is talking about more here than just running, but first you have to understand what it takes to run a long race. Let's say you want to run a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. <laughs> There's no way you can just hop up off the sofa where you've been playing video games for months and run that far. So you need a plan. When I was preparing for my first marathon, <clears throat> I found this plan. I started training more than four months ahead of the race, and I started with just a few miles at a time. Once you've got a plan, well, then you gotta move. That means short runs, long runs, and cross training to work other muscles and prevent injury. Next up, you've got to fuel. Plenty of water, of course. Plus, you need healthy carbs for your long runs like bananas. And maybe some spaghetti and meatballs. Mmm. Mmm. What's the last part of your training? Get ready for it. Rest. <sighs> if you don't rest and let your body recover, you'll get burnt out or injured. The last few days before a marathon, you don't even run at all. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Running a long race is no joke. But Paul says what we're doing right now, you and me, is even more important. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So I do not run like someone who doesn't run toward the finish line. I do not fight like a boxer who hits nothing but air. Paul packs a lot of weight into just a few sentences. Whether you planned it or not, we are all running a race right now. Okay, so that's a little crazy. Clearly, I'm standing here talking to you, and you aren't outside running laps either. But Paul is talking about a way of life, a journey. We're all focused on the finish line, life forever with Jesus. But in the meantime, every step along the way is important as we live out what matters most. Jesus reminded his followers, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yep, love God, love others. That's what matters on this journey together. But just like you can't skip from jogging one lap around the school gym to running a 26.2 mile race, 
you're gonna need some practice. Your Love God, Love Others Marathon needs a training plan. Now, none of us have it all figured out, but here are four important things to start with. In fact, you may already be doing some of them. First point, hear. God is the master teller of this amazing story. He's the author of this whole race, so the most important thing is learning to hear from God. That means digging into God's word and hearing the stories and wisdom from people who walked with him. And you can also hear from God from people around you in your life who know and follow him. Now, here's the second step in training for our Love God, Love Others Marathon. Pray. Okay, when you hear pray, you might think, Truth is, you don't need fancy words to pray. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. Just like talking to your mom or your best friend. Now let's take a look at point three in our training plan. Talk. Hello out there! Tell other people what God has been up to in your life, what's changing, how you're learning to love others better. And here's the final point in your Love God, Love Others training plan. Live. Live for God. Let his love fill up every part of your life, at home, at school, at church, even when your dad makes you stop reading your book to play a game with your little sister. Hear, pray, talk, live. That's how you practice loving God and loving others. As Paul wrote, so run in a way that will get you the prize. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. And when you do, you will live out Paul's wisdom to the Corinthians and win the race. <sighs> when the Apostle Paul wrote about running a race, it was about way more than a 5K. It was about life, because sometimes life can feel like a race. That's why we've got to train. We need to make a commitment to practice what matters most. Jesus taught that what matters most is to love God and love others. How do you do that? Well, you can start with these four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear, hear from God, pray, pray to God, talk, talk about God. Live, live for God. In the race of life, you can't always rely on your own strength. <laughs> You'll need God's help and wisdom to keep running. It's not always going to be easy. You may even want to give up, but it's better to keep going because loving God and loving others is the most important thing you will ever do. Here's the one thing to remember today. Keep practicing what matters most, loving God and loving others. This may come natural to you, or it may seem totally new. Whatever the case, just commit to training a little bit every day. It'll be good for you. I guess if I commit to training, I need to do what's good for me and try a little bit of kale. Hi, hey, that's not bad. I feel more energetic already. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm ready and I'm a fan of kale. Bye.
What are you doing, John? Trying to finish 5K. You know that's not how 5Ks work, right? What? There's a lot of fiber in this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And yeah, now that's how 5K is supposed to work. Way to go. John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to the So and So Show. Brandon and I have committed to run a 5K. Why? I'm not sure. Someone thought it was a good idea. Ah, uh -huh. well, when you commit to running a race, you need to make a plan on how to get yourself ready and stick to that plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do one of those training apps that you can get on your phone. There's there's one called Couch to 5K that mm -hmm. looks really good, but then John said- I said we couldn't do that. No app is gonna prepare us for the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, or the ebbs and flows of running a race. Have you ever actually run a race? No, no. but that's, that's beside the point. Racing is like life. You never know what life is gonna throw at you. Mm -hmm. It's unpredictable. Yeah. So I developed a training course myself that will take us through unpredictable situations in multiple climates, so we'll be prepared for anything. The real race might throw at us. Okay, but you know that we're running the 5K in the spring on a city street. Okay, so let's talk more practice. Come on, buddy. Let's go to the course. <laughs> high knees, high knees. Sigh. Okay, why, why are we doing this? There's no way we're gonna be running in the snow, right? Because you have to be prepared, Brandon. When you commit to something, you have to be ready for any outcome. And we have had some late spring snowstorms. When? You know, in the spring of 1970. It is not gonna snow, John. <laughs> you can't predict the weather, Brandon. And switch. Oh. Oh, now we're in the desert? This will never happen. What? We, we, we can make a wrong turn in a race and end up in the desert. Oh, flying cactus. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh, that switch. Oh. Seriously, John. This is getting out of hand. Practice. Wow. Makes. Oh. Perfect. Oh. That switch. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is more like it. This is what we should be training for. Wait for it. I want what? my two dollars! Ow! What was that? <laughs> it's a paper boy. He's ruthless. Huh? Oh, heads up! What? Ow! <laughs> Can we stop now, please? I think we're prepared! Two dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're that prepared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Look out! Whoa! Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're training for a 5K. Yeah, we're practicing commitment, duck. Oh. Ah, <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about today. I mean, not running and dodging newspapers, but the commitment part. Oh, great, take it away, Kellen. This comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians was a letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Jesus followers in the city of Corinth. Paul wrote the letter to encourage people to stay committed to living the way Jesus would want them to live. This letter is like a speech a coach might give a team to really get them pumped up. It starts like this. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Pretty inspiring stuff, but I think we could do it even better. Help me out, cheer squad. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? Are you ready to commit? I was born ready. Mm -hmm. Who is ready to run this race? I am. Who is ready to run this race? That's me. When you are running, here's what we advise. You should run in a way that will get you the prize. Woo!
awesome. But just to be clear, I don't think Paul was telling us to go out and literally start running. Really? Really? Really. I think Paul was comparing our lives to a race. When you're in a race, you do the best you can, right? It takes commitment and practice. But when you're running with a goal in mind, the finish line, it's the same with your life. You should try to do the best in life. It'll take commitment and it'll take practice. But the goal should be to live your life like there's a prize at the end. Now, Paul gave us a hint in what that prize could be. He wrote, all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Now, the people reading this letter in Paul's day would have known the kind of crown you could win in a race. It would be made of leaves or pine needles, and it wouldn't last very long. But Paul wrote that Jesus' followers should be running for a crown that will last forever. Take it, cheer squad. Yo, Jackie! Yes, it is! Do you want to win? Always! <laughs> win me a race gives you a crown, but it will not last for long. So run with Christ and you can't go wrong. That's great, cheer squad. Now that we know the kind of race we're training for, the question is, how do we train? How do you practice life? Well, you can start with these four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear means we should practice hearing from God by reading the Bible or listening for his wisdom. Pray means we should practice talking to God, telling him how great he is and asking him for help and forgiveness. Talk is practicing talking about God with others. It's asking questions when we don't understand something and sharing the good news with people who haven't heard about Jesus. And live means we practice living for God. We try and think about God before every choice we make and do things in a way that honor Him. That's how you train for the race of life. Let's hear one more from the cheer squad. Ooh, hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? I'm ready to lace up my kicks and oh. run this race. I hear you. Let's slay this thing. On your mark, get set, go. Are you in? T-H-A-T race Are you gonna run like you want first place? Are you in T-H-A-T race? Then practice like you mean it and you'll be an ace Are you in T-H-A-T race? Remember four words that will help your case Are you in T-H-A-T race? Hear, pray, talk, live, now start today Thanks, cheer squad. Woo! Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think I'm ready to run the 5K now. I think I'm ready for anything now. Two dollars! Oh, hoo -hoo! see? <laughs> it's true. When we train, when we practice, it prepares us for things, well, we might not see coming. You just got to remember those four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. That's great, Kellen. Hey, thanks. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You know, it just occurred to me, we should get one of those running apps you can get on your phone. It'd be way simpler. <laughs> you ever hear of Catch to 5K? Reveal the question. How does practice help you? John? I practice soccer all the time. And now I can do this. Ooh. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. What about you? Uh, when, when I practice playing an instrument, it helps me learn it so well that I can do it without even thinking about it. Like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love the beautiful tones of the mouth harp? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How does practice help you? In sports or at school or in life. Let's talk about it together, and we'll see you next week for a brand new show! Yay! <laughs> Name that tune. Okay. <laughs> the theme to name that tune. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the paper boy's back! 
Oh! Okay, no, no, stop it! Switch! Give him his two dollars! I don't have the, I don't have any pockets! Oh, now this, oh, we're getting attacked! They threw an ostrich! What? How dare you! They're flightless! Ah. Okay. Oh. Switch! Oh. oh, good, a living room. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's, let's see what's on. Oh, marathon. Oh, great. You ever been to a marathon? Can they do CG couches? 